It's August and our garden is finally in full production. Come along with me and I'll show you how everything's looking right now. This is our main area of tomatoes and as you can see, we have a lot of growth on them. They've been a little bit slower to start. We planted them a smidge later that we would have liked to due to a little bit of a colder spring. I should have been braver and just put them out but I was afraid that all of our seedlings would be killed by frost early. As you can see, we are finally starting to get some red tomatoes. We have beefsteaks down there. They're tomatoes and they're turning red and I'm going to make all the delicious things out of them. So I'm excited to see the color finally popping up on some of them. In between the tomatoes, I also had planted some onion seeds that have come up fairly well. And then our main crop of onions that I started indoors from seed and I started them in clusters and then planted the whole cluster are also doing well. A lot of them have started to pop out of the ground, but their stalks haven't started to lean over and dry out yet. So we're leaving them here until we start seeing those signs that we know it's time to pick them. More volunteer tomatoes from last year behind me. This one we haven't pruned as well, so it's getting a little bit of blight here and there, but they aren't doing too bad. We're getting some color on them, so that's what we want to see. This is our main bed of green beans and purple beans. We are getting near the end of the life on these guys, but they all did very well for us. The ones that were stragglers up on this part where I'm pointing of the bed picked up a little bit later, so it was nice. It was kind of like they were succession planted, even though they were planted all at the same time. We still definitely have some beans that we're getting, but they aren't near as prolific as they were when they first started putting on. And more beans that we did plant later have just started to come up so hopefully the weather stays well enough for these to produce these are some black turtle beans that we have all back here we planted them in a couple different spots in these cluster little beds around the garden these were the first ones we did so it's nice to see them starting to bush out and grow well this was one of our pepper beds that we did it is all mostly bell peppers and we do have one jalapeno plant here. The jalapeno is doing fairly well. I've already harvested a lot off of her and she's still producing and we have more on her. The peppers are so-so. Last year we had a really good pepper harvest on every single one that we planted. So this year it's just a little bit disappointing but I'm not trying to be too disappointed as we still have some time in the season yet to go. And as you can see, there are still peppers that are coming on really small ones. We still have flowers, so giving them hope and hoping for them to keep on producing for us. Our zucchinis back here, the smaller, sadder looking ones were our yellow squash, yellow zucchini. They still have a little bit coming, but they are not doing that well. The green zucchinis are nice and big, and I'm finding green ones here and there. But the other day I was out here and I got a little scared. I found some little blue bugs with black legs and I found out that those are the nymphs from squash bugs. So from what I read online is that the squash bugs are very hard to kill. We like zucchini, but we're not really big zucchini eaters. The majority of the zucchini that I've already harvested, I have shredded and frozen it or I shredded a bunch and actually dried it in our dehydrator to add to things later this year. Back here, I am very excited for these. As you can see, none of them have bloomed yet, but they are so close. These are going to be the giant mammoth sunflower heads. I've heard from many people that if I want to keep the seeds for us or for our chickens, that I will need to cover them with a bag to make sure the birds don't get them all first. So I probably will try that with a few of them, but it just amazes me how tiny they were, how slow they came on, and then all of a sudden they are now bigger than I am. Unfortunately, our potatoes are looking a bit sad. We had the same issue kind of last year where they yellowed out, they got spots on them. So we're probably gonna get these dug up and just see what we get from the harvest. These were planted pretty late. These are some watermelon. And then I also planted a pumpkin pie pumpkin. Some of its stem looks a little odd, but it still has flowers. She's still growing. I'm just letting her do her thing. The herb bed is still doing pretty well. My basil has gone nuts. I have been cutting it, dehydrating it, storing it in jars for later. The lemon basil, I gave up on getting the flowers off. 
so she is just starting to flower all out and I'm letting her do her thing here. Another one that has gone to flower is all of my cilantro, but that's fine with me because I love cilantro, so I am happy to let her go to seed and I will save the seeds or hopefully they'll just fall in and we'll get some that pop up when the weather gets cooler. I have some dill that started a little bit late down here that's starting to come up, which is great because our pickling cucumbers are our biggest producer this year. So I've been harvesting lots of dill, making a lot of pickles. And then down in here, I was very excited to see these start coming up. They came up a little bit later, but I have a lot of sage that has sprouted. And along with the basil, I've also been picking the sage and dehydrating it to store in jars to use for later. My calendula has done really well. I've harvested a lot of these to make some salves. And right now, a lot of them are going to seed. So I'm gonna let that happen and also save those seeds to use for next year. My chamomile's kind of close to also getting to the end of its life, but same, I've been harvesting from the chamomile. And then these are marshmallow plants. The second year that they're in production is when you went to harvest the roots. There's a throat coat tea that we like to drink that's made with marshmallow. So that's specifically why I'm growing these. And they have all kinds of flowers. Wondered if they'd smell like marshmallow. They don't. They're really soft though. These will come back even better next year after doing such a good job of producing this year for us. I have more dill down here that I've harvesting, been harvesting a lot from and she's already starting to flower too. So we're just gonna let her do her thing. Two things that I am so excited about that were very hard to get going and I did not think that I would be able to start. They are still very teeny tiny, but these are lavender. I believe it's Munstead lavender is the variety. And my good friend told me that even though they're small this year, that means the root system is developing down below very well. So next year we should have hopefully beautiful flushes of purple lavender flowers to use. This is also an echinacea that I thought had died back and she's come up. And then I believe this tiny little one here is rosemary. So even though very small this year, hopefully next year, this area of the garden bed will be filled with all the other herbs. And then outside where Ben had tilled, the spaghetti squash has decided to come through the fence on this side. And we have two little spaghetti squashes growing for us one on the other side and that's fine. They can use it and trellis up and grow as they need for us. Our carrot beds looking pretty good. They're getting larger and we have dug up a few of them, but they're still quite small, not too straight. We have really clay soil and trying to do the no dig method the best we can here. So the few that we've dug up, they just didn't seem ready yet. So we're gonna leave them in there a little bit longer and hopefully I'll have enough time here to get another sowing of carrots in before the end of the season. The zinnias are doing wonderful for us. When I come out here in midday to pick or check on things or get stuff for lunch or supper, everything is just coated in bees, which I'm working on getting over my fear of the bees, but I know it's wonderful for the garden. So I love having all of our zinnias out here for the bees to come and enjoy. And then up here, I believe these are lemon queen sunflowers that are just awesome. They're coated in heads. These were the first ones of the sunflowers to start blooming. So as you can see, there are so many more ready to open. We cannot wait. The two-year-old and I are out here almost every day, super excited to see all the sunflowers open up. One of the plants that I haven't kept up on as much and just kind of let go because they were really small and we got plant starts from a nursery is our okra. They have started somewhat taking off for us and I am a bit behind on harvesting because I read that they're supposed to be about two inches long when you harvest. These are sort of an experiment for this year just to learn how they work. This is another patch of our black turtle beans that we planted late. Some up front are doing great, getting all bushy, starting to get their flowers and buds on them. Other ones in the back are a little off colored, but that's how our green beans look too. Half the bed was good coloring and the other half was a lot lighter and then the lighter ones caught up so they either will or they won't we'll see what happens 
Since we had so many extra tomato starts, we just kind of filled in where we had space. So this is another cherry tomato that got planted here who's doing really well. We also have three Romas planted here in the cages. And then in front of them is some celery that I think I'm a little behind on getting to. So I need to come in and take care of that. The cucumbers have been doing great for us. I've been trying to get them lately when they're smaller instead of letting them get so large with making pickles. In the past week, we have had a bit of cooler weather too, so our peas are starting to produce again that had died back. We also have more tomatoes planted amongst the noodle beans. I forget the exact variety of these, but they're just, they're so cool. What a cool bean to grow. They taste pretty much just like regular green beans. I fry them up the same way with butter and salt. They've been very interesting to grow and to eat. So I also have some random nasturtiums scattered throughout and random calendulas that have finally started to take off for us. So that's nice to see those and helps with for the honeybees and pollination to have those coming. And then here I have more marshmallow and more calendula. These all bloomed and came up first for us. So the calendula is really close to the end. Calendula seeds are very interesting to me. The first time I opened a seed packet, I was like, what are these dry, dead looking worms? But calendulas grow from them. So that's pretty amazing. Another new one for us this year that's amongst the tomatoes is this tomatillo plant. I love salsa verde and found the tomatillo at one of the nurseries when we got some extra tomato start. It is doing very, very well. I've been picking it slowly and putting the tomatillos in the freezer, hopefully saving up enough to when they're all ripe to make some really good salsa verde. And I wasn't sure to tell how when they were ready, but when the paper slits, that's when you know the tomatillo is ready to harvest. So along with all those volunteer tomato plants that we had all over the place, Ben actually did pull some of them and we planted them along the outsides. Some are doing better than others, for a long time, they were really small and looked really weak. Some of them do have baby tomatoes and then a lot of them have at least started to flower. So as long as the heat comes back and we can keep it long enough here in Indiana, we'll definitely get some more tomatoes off all these volunteers that Ben planted for us too. So we've had to do some work. Ben did some work. I didn't do any work. <laughs> we have let the new garden outside the main garden go. The grass was this high. Ben just came out and weed whacked it all down for us. And we have a lot of beans, green beans, that are coated in beans. So I need to come out and get those harvested, especially since our others are dying back. And then back here, we have a lot of spaghetti squash and watermelons that are doing really, really well. You kind of have to search for them, but amongst the weeds, we're gonna have some good fruit and squash as long as the season keeps up with us. We're not real big squash eaters, but spaghetti squash is one that I really enjoy, the girls really enjoy, and we're teaching Ben to enjoy it too. So hopefully we'll have a lot to put up in our storage this year. Being at the end of the harvesting season, we have a lot of food preservation and canning videos coming up, so make sure to subscribe. In the meantime, check out one of our other videos. Thank you for watching, and remember to live free and find your purpose.